In the name of Allah, the most compassionate, the most merciful, and may the peace and bless of Allah be upon his last and beloved Messenger Muhammad, and may the peace and bless of Allah be upon you all. The title of this video is the miracle in the last two chapters of the Quran. Now, as an introduction to this video, brothers and sisters, when the last two chapters of the Quran were revealed to Prophet Muhammad, chapter 113 and 114 of the Quran, he commented, Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, commented on the, la, on the verses contained in these chapters by saying that this night verses were revealed that the, nothing like them were seen before. So this is a rough translation of what he said, that this night verses were revealed that nothing, before, nothing like these verses were seen before. Now this tells us that these verses, they contain information of paramount importance. And in this video, I will show by the guidance of Allah God Almighty some of the miracles and the knowledge that can be learned from these verses. Now to start with chapter 114 of the Quran, uh, verse 4, which states, From the evil of the whisperer who hides. This is verse number 4 of chapter 114 of the Quran. The translation is that, from the evil of the whisperer who hides. So here Allah Almighty teaches us the ways of the effect of Satan on us, the devil. So in these um, verses, Allah Almighty exposes Satan to us. And why? Because we know that Satan is our enemy. Allah tells us in the Quran that Satan is our enemy. So by exposing this enemy to us, he... Allah God Almighty saves you from him because when you know the tricks of your enemy, when you expose him, you will be less susceptible for his attacks. Now, Allah tells us that Satan, he whispers to each and every one of us. He whispers, he talks. Whispering meaning talking, he talks to each and every one of us. But Allah tells us at the same time, Satan hides from you. So he whispers to you, he talks to you, but at the same time he hides from you. So we learn that each and every one of us has a companion devil, Satan, that whispers to him. But at the same time, he hides from you, he does not, he doesn't make you to feel his presence. He camouflages himself, he hides from you, so he does not allow you or tries not to expose, not to, for you not to feel his presence. So he hides from you. Now the question arises, how can this creature, this entity, talk to you and at the same time hide from you? How, how, how can't you feel his presence? That's the question. Now let's see the engineering miracle in this um, verse. Now we can learn the answer for what I said, this question, by pondering upon a, a verse in the Quran which states the following, the translation the following, and Allah God created humans, and He knows what His own self whispers to Him with, and we are closer to Him than His jugular vein. So we learn from this verse that each and every one of us has a voice of oneself, and that's the voice you speak with. Each and every one of us has a distinct voice, it's like, you're the, it's like a fingerprint, it's something that distinguishes you from other people, it's the, the, your voice. Now, if we take a recording of your voice, as you can see on the screen, if we recorded the voice for three seconds, and here we have a recording for half a second, we see that your voice, when it's analyzed from a signal analysis, when we do signal analysis on your voice, we see that it's composed of sine waves. It has its energy in the shape of water waves, sine waves. So this is analysis of human voice, your voice. This is the voice of yourself. So, this is the same voice you hear in your head when you are thinking quietly to yourself. And this signal can be characterized mainly by two parameters. Besides the shape of the signal, as I said, it's a sine wave, it's the shape of water waves. It can be characterized by the wavelength, lambda, and by the frequency. So, by knowing the wavelength and the frequency of a signal, you can more or less characterize the signal in addition to its shape. 
So this is your human voice, what you hear in your head. Now coming back to how can Satan talk to you at the same time hide from you that you don't, you don't feel his presence. Now let me give an example to illustrate this point. Suppose that you are standing in a room and there is somebody behind you. And this person wants to talk to you but he doesn't want you to know that he's there. But at the same time he wants to talk to you. Now how can he accomplish this? The only way he can accomplish this is if he matches his voice with regard to tone, frequency, wavelength, the languages you know, he matches his voice to the one you speak with. So when he talks, you hear your, your, your exact voice and you think that you are thinking to yourself with this thought. Now likewise, Satan, what he does to each and every one of us, he matches his voice, he makes his voice identical with regards to tone, frequency, wavelength, the languages you know, to your own voice. So what Satan does is that he matches his voice to your own voice. He makes his voice identical with all regards, tone, frequency, wavelength, languages, to your own voice. And what happens is that when he talks to you, you hear thoughts in your mind. And because the voice is identical, you think that your own, vo your own self is telling you this. Again, because the voice is identical, you think that your own self is telling you this. You think that you are thinking to yourself with these thoughts. So we see, brothers and sisters, the engineering miracle in the chapter 114 of the Quran. As I said, Allah Almighty tells us this to save us from the damage and from the effect of Satan on us. Now, another kind of uh, miracle in the, these two last ch chapters of the Quran, and we can see, brothers and sisters, more and more why Prophet Muhammad, peace upon him, said that, the, that or gave these two verses, two chapters, a lot of importance. Now, if we think about verse number 4 of chapter 113 of the Qur'an, which states, and from the evil of the blowers in the knots. So, uh, verse number 4 of chapter 113 of the Qur'an states, and from the evil of the blowers in the knots. Now, Allah tells us here that there is damage, there is harm of Satan blowing in the knots, blowing producing vibrations in the knots. Now, what, the question is, what is, what's, the, um, what's the damage or the harm produced from Satan blowing in the knots? And what are the knots? To understand and to know the answer for this question, we need to ponder, brothers and sisters, upon verse number 21 of chapter 51 of the Quran, which states, And in your own selves will you not then see? And, your own, and in your own selves will you not then see? So here Allah the Almighty urges us to think and ponder upon our body, to think how Allah created our body. Now if we do that, to know what are these knots that Satan blows into. If we, if we study the human brain, as you can see on the screen, we see that Allah the Almighty designed the human brain, that it's composed of neural knots, that the neurons, the cells comprising the brain, they are arranged in kind of knots, in, in groupings in the brain. Now, each grouping of these neurons, they are responsible, each knot, the neural knots, is responsible for certain action in the body. For example, when certain neural cells in the brain, neural knots, are excited, stimulated, they produce a neural input and a neural kind of current that goes down from the brain and stimulates the contraction of muscles. So this is part of the function of these knots. So having understood this, coming back to the question, what has Satan to do with this? The devil, what's the link between the devil and these kind of neural nodes and the transmission of neural signals from the brain to contract muscles? Now let me demonstrate this by giving an example. Now, Suppose that you, you washed yourself and you're coming out from the bathroom. A thought comes to your mind with a voice match the one you think with. And now you know that this, the source of this thought is not yourself, is your companion devil, Satan. Now, he's telling you in your mind, as if your, yourself is telling you this, he's telling you that you are dirty, you are unclean. Go back and wash yourself again. 
And b before this lecture, you thought that this voice is from yourself. So what the person does, he goes back and he watches again and he repeats his time so many, he repeats his action so many times. And as a result, he wastes his time, effort, he causes damage to his skin. And Satan loves this. He loves to waste your time to cause you pain. So this is, uh, he, uh, Satan develops a phobia in you, in you uh, from being unclean. So at the same time, when he's telling you these thoughts, he's talking to you. He directs the, the blowing, the, the vibration produced from his uh, voice to the neural knots, the neural nodes in the brain that produces a neural signal that causes the muscles in the chest to contract. So he gives you a feeling of fear and anxiety. So again, when he whispers to you a thought that you are unclean, that you are dirty and so forth, he directs his voice to the neural nodes in the brain that produces tightness in the chest and, and produces a feeling of anxiety and fear. Why? Because Satan knows that when a person is in a state of fear, anxiety, he will do anything to remove this uh, feeling. So he wants you to go back and wash yourself again and again and again and to cause damage to your skin, to waste your time, waste your money and become in a kind of phobia. So we, we, we saw, brothers and sisters, the beauty of the Quran and how Allah the Almighty, the most merciful, He explains this to us to save us from this enemy. Because as I said, when this enemy is exposed, you will be safe from him. But because so many people, they don't know the source of these thoughts and feelings, he, he, carry, he uh, carries them out, uh, which causes him mental pain and anguish. Now, what I said, brothers and sisters, so many people, they find it strange, and they are so much inclined to reject it. Now, Muslims and non-Muslims uh, alike, now, the reason why... Now, Muslims, the reason they tend to find this strange, what I'm saying strange, is because they are so much uh, away from understanding the true meaning of the Qur'an and pondering upon the Qur'an. Now, then Muslims, because they are far away from Allah God Almighty and the true message of Allah contained in the Qur'an, they are far away from these meanings. Now, so, a proof is needed. So, because the people find strange, I need to produce proof. Now, I'll produce two, Allah God willing. Two proofs to show the truthfulness of what I said, and this conclu these conclusions from the Qur'an. Proof number one. If we ponder upon verse number 169 of chapter 2 of the Qur'an states, He, i.e. Satan, commands you what is harmful, sinful, and to say about Allah what you have no knowledge of. The, the verse again, He, i.e. Satan, commands you what is harmful, sinful, and to say about Allah what you have no knowledge of. So here Allah teaches us the kind of thoughts that Satan whispers to you with. He whispers to you ideas of harm, to hurt yourself and others. Like telling you, for example, with a voice matching what you think with, what is the purpose of this life? There is no, nothing good will happen to me, so why don't I end my life? This is the, all the thoughts of Satan. The other kind of thoughts, ideas of lust and perverted sexual ideas, putting idea, sexual, perverted sexual scenarios in your mind. And the third kind of thoughts, I did to say about Allah what you have a knowledge of. Insulting Allah God Almighty, Prophet Muhammad, the Quran. All of these are the thoughts of Satan. Now, this is from the Quran. Now, if, if you find this strange and consider it as a theory, if you consider this as a, as a theory, a hypothesis from the Quran, if you consider it that, how to prove a hypothesis or a theory? The way to prove it is to match these predictions that we have a voice, match the one we think with, in our mind, telling us ideas of harm, lust, and blasphemy, to, to compare these predictions, if you think about those predictions, with the actual experiments. Now, if the outcome of the experiments matches, if the outcome of the experiment matches the predictions, then it, the theory becomes a law. Now, let's see. There is a famous uh, psychiatrist, a British, called Aubrey Lewis. Now, he did a very famous experiment. This is a very famous man, and he did a very famous experiment 
that he asked the his patients, which they call the mental, uh, they have mental illnesses. They, they, he he asked them, what kind of thoughts that causes you pain and mental disturbances? So the patients replied by saying, they answered that we well, we suffer from these kind of thoughts that cause us mental pain and uh, disturbances. Ideas of harm to hurt ourselves and others, that we experience ideas of harm telling us to hurt ourselves and others. Ideas of lust and filth, perverted sexual scenarios, and blasphemy. Blasphemy meaning insulting religious values. So if we compare, as you can see on the screen, if we compare the kind of thoughts that people with mental disturbances suffer from, and those that, that Satan whispers to us with, as Allah tells us in the Quran, that he, i.e. Satan, commands you what's harmful, sinful, and to say about Allah what you have knowledge of, we see, brothers and sisters, a perfect match between the two. So there is a perfect match between the outcomes of the experiment and what Allah tells in the Quran. So, it stops becoming a hypothesis or a theory from the Quran, it becomes true, and thus, as Allah tells us, that Satan whispers to us by a voice person, when we think with, it becomes true, and it stops being a hypothesis or a theory. Now, proof number two. There is um, um, another famous experiment that there is a device called the MRI, Magnetic Resonance Imaging Device. Now, this device, there is a, a kind of uh, application from it called fMRI, functional MRI. It can show the activity of the brain during functioning. So this device, as you can see on the screen, can show the, uh, the electrical activity of the human brain during functioning. Now, what this experiment, what people did, that they brought a person who's labeled mentally ill, and they placed him in this device, this MRI device, in a completely silent room, a room with no sound whatsoever. And they, imaged, they, they uh, recorded the activity of his brain. Now, what they found is that the audio cortex, the audio region in the brain, the auditory region, the region that handles voice input to the brain, they found it that it's working as if he, that person is hearing something. So again, the outcome of the experiment that they found that the region in the brain responsible for uh, analyzing uh, voices and uh, handling uh, audio input to the brain they found the human body, they found that it's working as if in a completely silent room he's hearing somebody talking to him. Now the only explanation for this is what Allah tells us in the Quran that Satan matches his voice, the one we think with, and he talks to us and he at the same time he hides from us. So that is the only exp explanation for this. So this is proof number two to the truthfulness of the words of Allah Almighty in the Quran. So we see that it becomes now the, what Allah tells us in the Quran, it becomes an established fact. Now, so we, we saw, brothers and sisters, how Allah the Almighty, He is the most merciful, and He wants guidance, and He wants people to be in happiness and prosperity. And Allah knows the damage that, can, that Satan can inflict on us, so He's exposing Him to us. So those who insult Allah the Almighty and insult Prophet Muhammad and the Quran, they are following what Satan is telling them. So please realize what I'm saying. And stop agreeing with what Satan is telling you in your mind. And stop carrying it out. Because Satan, he comes to you in disguise as if he's advising you. But, but actually, he wants the exact opposite. He wants you to disobey Allah God Almighty. And he wants you to, pain, to be in pain and despair in this life and hereafter. And lastly, to think about the following verse in the Quran, chapter 17, verse 82, which states, And Allah God sends down from the Quran that is healing and mercy to those who believe, and it increases the wrongdoers, nothing but loss. So here Allah tells us that, he, that the Quran, it increases the, it uh, contains what is mercy and uh, healing to those who believe who believe in the Qur'an, who ponder upon the verses, as you saw in this lecture, there is a complete diagnosis and cure for mental disturbances. And Allah says that it increases the wrongdoers, nothing but loss. 
And a wrongdoer is not only a disbeliever in Allah God Almighty. A wrongdoer can be a Muslim. A Muslim can be a wrongdoer by doing wrong to himself, by going away from the Quran and not pondering upon the verse of the Quran. And to know more details about what I said, please visit my website at www.quran-miracle.com and you can email me at zaidquran.com and may the peace and blessings of Allah be upon you all.